Welcome to episode number five of the Road to Cinema podcast, featuring husband and wife editors Richard Holsey and Colleen Holsey. Today's episode takes a look behind the scenes of Rocky, Edward Scissorhands, Beaches, starring Bette Midler, and some of the late director Paul Mazursky's incredible films, which Richard Holsey edited, which include Harry and Tonto, winner of the Best Actor Oscar for Art Carney, Next Stop Greenwich Village, Moscow on the Hudson, starring the late Robin Williams, and Down and Out in Beverly Hills, starring Nick Nolte, Bette Midler, and Richard Dreyfuss. For more information on the Road to Cinema podcast, to read the Road to Cinema blog, and to watch our Road to Cinema YouTube series, please visit jogroadproductions.com. For the latest updates, don't forget to follow us on Twitter, at Jog Road. And now we join editor Colleen Holsey as she discusses how she met her husband and future collaborator, Richard Holsey. Well, he was already had a huge career. He had already won the Oscar. And before even doing Rocky, Richard already had done many pretty outstanding films. So his career was way beyond mine. I was a fashion buyer, and I lived in Northern California, and I wa- uh, wanted to go back to school. I went back to film school, San Francisco Art Institute, and my twin sister um, was an agent, and she represented John Bailey, who is married to Carol Littleton, a very well-known editor. Anyway, cut to the chase. Uh, Carol uh, got me interested. It, well, I, I was interested, and Carol helped me. Uh, she, when I moved from Berkeley to L.A., she introduced me to, like, 30 names, and she said, call these names, don't be too pest, you know, pesty, but, you know, <laughs> keep, keep on it, and Richard's name was one of them, and it just so happened, um, I got through to him, and I said, I'd like to meet you, and he said, come on over, and it happened to be here, mm-hmm. um, our editing rooms used to be downstairs. We have a third level apartment, and that's where we used to have. What edit. year was that? That was? Uh, 83. 80, 1983. Yeah. yeah. And so I drive in from Malibu. I go down there. I knock on the door, and the door flies open, and it's his assistant. And I said, I have a meeting with uh, Richard. And he says, He's busy. Slam the door in my face. And I never met. <laughs> and so then, a you year a year, later. a year later, Richard calls my twin sister and says, "I'm looking for work. Could you help me find a job?" Because she's an agent. And she says, "Oh, okay. Uh, you're working now." And he says, "Yeah, on a non small non union picture." She says, "Oh, well, my sister would like to. Um, yeah, she's trying to break in. Do could she apprentice or even come observe with you?" And he says, well, is she half as cute as you are? And she says, <laughs> she, she, he, she says uh, she's my twin. And he says, okay, she's hired. So that was 30 years ago. And that's how, I, and then I started with him on a small film, in a small indie film. And then from there, Christmas we moved time. on to Down and Out Beverly Hills. And that's, and she... Got grandfathered into the union. Mm. You know, you, you know, you have to. Have, those it was really hard. Union it's hard. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, as an assistant, um, what is usually the process of getting into the union like that? Is it? Uh, well, our daughter Morgan's uh, going to maybe ha- have an opportunity. She goes down to the union tomorrow. Uh, if you're working on a non-union project and it gets unionized, that's yeah. exactly what happened on this picture. Yeah. You get. In, and or you work a certain amount of non-union hours. You go down to contract services, yeah. put your name on their list, yeah. and then you, if you get a union job, you have already proven that you've done enough work in the field that they let you join them. Mm-hmm. And that's what Alfonso's doing. He's accumulated hours mm-hmm. on non-union projects. So as an assistant at the beginning, uh, what did you learn uh, from Richard that sort of, uh, you know, helped you out when you later became a, an editor full on? And I when you guys were actually working together. <laughs> <laughs> she was actually trained by a former assistant, a guy by him on, on, down on Beverly Hills. He really trained. He was like 
a drill sergeant, and he trained Colleen mm -hmm. really well. Mm -hmm. Really, right? But as far as editing goes, no, you're... that's a whole different thing. Yeah, you first, can... first she learned the assistant ropes. Then once she got that down, then she started editing scenes. I w I edited movies. a scene yeah. on Down and Out. Yeah, he had me editing right away. Uh, what scene uh, were you editing? Uh, the scene where Nick Nolte is eating the dog food. <laughs> oh, in yeah. the kitchen, or yeah. he's like with the trying dog to get and... the dog to eat the dog food because they okay. were having. And that was, but we were editing on film then, so that was very different. Mm. Uh, thought it's a similar. I mean, you you end up with the same results, but the process was a a lot more of. Uh, watching and then studying the film really rigorously and then because yeah. you didn't want to make a, a bad edit and then have to uh, splice it and have a bunch of splices in it was editing sound more difficult uh back then before digital because yeah you, sort you of didn't have as separate. much yeah. i mean you we how many tracks did, we way rich and i we had two camp two baby cams each and we could run three tracks of sound which is like we'd have a music, sound effects, and dialogue, but only one track per. So, like now with uh, digital, you can have technically. Yeah. It's technically, much it, was, it was on film more complicated, and getting the results you wanted, you had to. I used a lot of tricks, ways of doing it, but digitally, uh, yeah, with the sound, you can finish a picture. Digitally, yeah. I mean the digital world. It's much easier. Yeah, and you were one of the first editors to use uh, Final Cut. Uh, so, what motivated you to make that transition? Um, let's see. Uh, pretty simple. Yeah. Uh, I got my first HD movie, and bought an editing system. And put it in right there, and yeah. did my first HD movie. I think that was on the net. Uh, was that no. the first? No. Uh, well, you that oh, was your first wait, wait, wait. Avid yeah. show. Yeah, the first Avid show. That was an Avid show. Okay. The net and a very short schedule. Mm. Yeah, I've I've been trying to switch in the early '90s to a digital editing system, but the producers at that point still f felt it was more economical to cut on film. You know what I mean? It wasn't... In the independent world, it was more prevalent. In the major studio world, they're slow to make changes. You know? Mm -hmm. And slow to... I remember I was at uh, MGM. I don't even know what picture I was doing. But I went to visit this guy, Stephen Cohen. Oh, we were doing uh, So I Married an Axe Murderer. So I Married an Axe Murderer, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Stephen Cohen was editing one of the very first movies on an avid. And I just wanted to see w what's going on with this. And uh, he was very active in that in that world, you know. And I said, this this is the future, you know. Yeah. And and I'll be honest with you, Mike Myers on uh, So I Married an Axe Murderer. He tried to get it. He, there was a conflict. He being, you know, working Saturday Night Live and being a very creative person on Saturday Night Live, yeah. of course they had some sort of digital editing system. I don't know if it was digital or, was, you know, videotape editing or whatever. But, you know, he had a very hard time with the amount of time it took to make the changes in the film world. Mm. Yeah. So at one point during the middle of that picture, uh, they came to me and asked if I, if I could switch. I said, at this stage, we're nearing the end, switching over. It was not cost effective. Yeah. You know, you know, but yes. So, yeah. So the net, the net was an, ex, ex, it was combination film and digital. Yeah. You know, we shot on film and we, but yes, it was. But at that point, we were cutting digitally, but still conforming to film, yeah. which people don't do anymore. Now it's completely a digital output. You would yeah, never go from anything. digital back to film. And no. Then... 
But it was amazing in New York City, this is the truth, this is amazing. In one week, in one week, we had three previews. Mm. Wow. Imagine, if you will, we preview on Monday. Tuesday, we make all the physical changes digitally, conform the, the film, right? Mm. Yeah. The work print. Output from the Avid a new soundtrack, marry those together, and then go to the preview with a dub, what they call a double system, separate picture and separate track. Yeah. Make changes the next day. We had three previews in one week, and but you know I had, yeah. I had a, I had like three assistants. I was in New York. Up until two thousand and two, two thousand three. They were still doing that, editing digitally, but conforming to work print. Yeah. And previewing on the work print. Now they just... It's all gone. hard drives connected to a projector, mm -hmm. and you can just easily exactly. get it out there. Yeah. Um, so I was going to ask, you worked on so many films with Paul Mazursky, uh, who recently passed away. Uh, I was sort of wondering what your working experience was like with him. and uh, it, it was the Harry best. and Tonto, I think, was the first film. Yeah. It, it, it was the best. Art Carney won the Oscar. Yeah, amazing uh, performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the thing with working with Paul was it was just he and I making the decisions. There, there was no one else. Mm -hmm. No one else. Musically, the only thing that happened was uh, occasionally, like on Down Out in Beverly Hills, in order for Paul to make the movie, they wanted Nick Nolte to come back at the end. You, you know, it was, it's, yeah, it was different. Yeah, when there's the alleyway. And yeah, they were having yeah, 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 yeah. So, it was, all the pictures I did with Mazursky, we made all the decisions. There was no, there was no meetings about <laughs> the picture. No producer the only, appearance. No, yeah. well, Paul was a producer. The only meetings we had were in terms of marketing. You know, with the so working with and, Paul yeah. was, and and um, he would sometimes go and meet the head of whoever, whatever studio we were making the picture for. He'd have a meeting with them, and they might have a couple of notes, and they say, "But it's up to you, Paul." Hmm. One thing we did on Harry and Tano, and 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 I don't know why we did it, and to this day it was a mistake. The studio said, well, if you could make the film a little shorter. And we cut this one sequence because we, and it was a huge mistake. Mm. It was a one minute scene where Art Carney shows Tonto, the cat, yeah. the Grand Canyon. Mm. It was just a visual, it was a great, I mean, one minute, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? That, so that was about the only mistake I have. I, we, Paul and I talked about it years later, you know, I mean, it's like, why did we do that? Yeah. You know, so... Um, What's incredible about Paul Mazursky's films is that his actors give these incredible performances, uh, whether it be Robin Williams, Moscow and the Hudson, and Nick Nolte, Richard Dreyfuss, Bette Midler, and Down and Out. Uh, just very consistent, old was, character pieces. Oh, he, he was br brilliant at writer. casting. Brilliant at casting and brilliant at directing the actors. The actors loved him. By far and away, he's the best director I ever worked with, and my favorite. Uh, working with John Allison, I did a picture with him at 20th Century Fox. Uh, was that WW? Yes. Yeah. And, and that's, I, is that the one that you hired Bill Conti on? No, I wanted to hire Bill Conti on that. Which one did you hire before Rocky? Richard brought Bill Conti on. For Harry Antonio. Hmm. Because he worked with him on yeah. Harry and Tano. That and great music score in Rocky. Yeah, so. that's Bill Conti. Yeah. And Richard actually got him the job. The great thing about Rocky was uh, hiring Bill Conti, the composer. And we brought him into the editing room. And, and, and doing that montage. I mean, Bill went and wrote the music and then we cut the montage to the music. It, it didn't oh, so the music came before the cutting of the montage? Well, it came... And 
simultaneously yeah. as we were working, Bill would write music. And everybody was involved in that montage. Mm. You know, and when the music came, I mean, all, you know, all of us, you know, Stallone, Avelson, you know. Yeah. It's in, where he's running around Philadelphia, he goes up the steps, it's, you know, such a famous, iconic moment. Yeah. Well, it was key that Richard Orr uh, had got uh, oh, yeah. Conchie they, in there. Oh, yeah. I mean, no, that's they, iconic. They didn't, they, they wanted to hire, um, they got romance. They wanted to hire this guy, Dominic Frontieri. He was a very good composer. Very good composer. He was going, uh, Dominic Frontieri, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I forget the picture he did. He did a picture and it was, it was quite good. And Stallone and Allison went up to his house. He was dating the, the woman that owned the Rams. This guy did it. He did a movie called Poppy or something. I think that's, that was it. And uh, ultimately, I pushed, and we got Bill the job. And one of the reasons being, he was it. All, it was only thirteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars to do for him to do the score. Yeah, that's writing and um, and that included the record. Mm. It was the, the, it, yeah, it was. And also, Bill, I think, won over Avildsen. Yeah. You know. He's a really charming guy. A very talented yeah. composer. Yeah. Oh, he's, he, he, he's, he's, he was, he was brilliant. Brilliant. And, um, yeah, he made a, his contribution was major in that film. When you first read a screenplay before production, uh, I'm sure you sort of have conceptual ideas of what the movie is, but then when you see the raw footage, do you sometimes have to just abandon the screenplay altogether and start constructing a brand new narrative and almost work as writers to Boy, make I, the movie? Boy, I, I avoid those. The first editing is reading the script and if, 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 if there's big problems, you yeah, know, stay yeah. away from it. Mm -hmm. don't, even, don't even bother. Mm -hmm. Don't bother. You're not going to take uh, good material and ruin it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, if it's, but if it's not there, I mean, Mazursky scripts, they, I mean, come on, they read, yeah. you know, the Rocky script, I read it in that room right back there. Mm. Wow. There was a, back there, I, I tell you my reaction when I read the script. Wow. I just seen Stallone and Lords of Flatbush. I said, I could be nominated for an Academy Award for editing. Mm. So, wow. Predicted right then. Wow. I knew I was going to win. Never, never a doubt. That I would win the Academy Award on that on that film, mm -hmm. I'd say to Scott, uh, what? <laughs> he was so nervous about everything, and I said, hmm. when they call, we're sitting there for the Academy Awards. I said, when they call our names, make sure you exit this way, and we both go out, so we're not, you know, <laughs> I mean, there, there's, you know, he, we were roommates, we were friends, you know. Uh, and he was very helpful on Rocky. We uh, spoke to Scott about the, the fight scene. Yeah. And he went through, I think it was like 14 hours of footage. Oh, my God. Put that it thing was together. like... It's incredible. Yeah, our, 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 oh, yeah. It was... He... he um, Avelson said, um, give me six cameras and I'll finish it in four days. Hmm. So they gave him... Uh, they, they gave him the cameras. Yeah. Yeah, but he didn't. He finished in five days. But, you know, even... There were shots that were missed, even because when you shoot multi-camera, the choreography is not as good. It's just multi-camera. I much prefer in, in dance, in musicals, or f a choreographed camera where you actually plan a shot. Yeah. Because yeah. then you don't have to edit. Whether it be moving and sort of just... See, you don't... That. But, like... Yeah. We we did a brilliant job on Rocky. I mean, yeah. if you look at that fight sequence, fucking empty seats in the arena. Mm. I, I read yeah. that uh, they couldn't afford extra, so they kind of had to move them all around the arena. Yeah, and Scott was... We, we got stock shots 
from uh, the Muhammad Ali film the, called The Fighters. And we strategically placed mm -hmm. wow. these three stock shots, you know, of Madison Square Garden. Yeah. And you felt like there were thousands and thousands of people there. And I remember going to the scoring stage with Conti, Bill Conti. And we got all the extras from uh, the Scorsese picture, New York, New York. And they came onto the scoring stage and then we did the chants. And Bill conducted, <laughs> conducted the crowd. Wow. Rocky, Rocky, Rocky. You know, and he was conducting. He was just, he was just fantastic. And, and, and Avelson, you know, he was not a fan of boxing, and I was not a big fan of boxing. Mm -hmm. So prior to the shooting of the film, he had shot in rehearsal some slow-mo stuff. Yeah. <laughs> we were smoking <laughs> marijuana and watching <laughs> the slow-mo slow stuff and playing classical music to it. Yeah. And that's when we came up, you know, came up with this idea for the montage of of the fights and the rounds yeah. and the bell and the girls going by with the, you know, the round numbers, and uh, and uh, I also got my friend in there, who was a production designer who had just he had worked on Mean Streets. I'm trying to think of his name. And he's the guy that came up with the. Uh, the ring, you know, like the American flag and, you know. Oh, yeah, to have it be the center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of that. a lot of people made contributions on that film yeah. that didn't get mm -hmm. recognition. There was a guy by the name of Bill Cassidy who did all the uh, storyboards for the end and was a yeah. commercial director and came up with some great things. Do you guys ever work on a scene together at the same time or do you always do no. everything separate for the most part? No, but we might after... Well, right now, Afterwards. how we're working is, well, like I said in the beginning of our career, um, he definitely was the guy in charge. He, he would look at everything, tell me what he wanted, and I would do it. Then, I gave you a lot of freedom. No, no, but <laughs> you did. And sometimes I came up with my own ideas, of course, yeah, of course. and it was fine. But uh, then we had to, I, I don't think I would ever have wanted a career only with him. I don't think anybody really, uh, it, always working with another editor, you should always at least have the experience of being in charge. Mm. Well, you were, she was on her own for six so years. So I went up, no, ten years. Ten years, yeah. I did, uh, yeah. yeah, I edited my own movies. Mm. Yeah. And had, he had no involvement at all. He, we really had separate lives. I was going off and he was still editing here, or would be on location. But, you know, I'd had enough training that, but... What I'm trying to say, it's nice being working collaboratively, but it's not the same as if you take it all on yourself. Mm -hmm. It's a much bigger job mm -hmm. working as the sole editor. When you're working on individual scenes and then you're putting together a cut of every scene in the movie, does your perspective change on how those individual scenes were cut initially once you see everything Often. within the context of yeah, the whole sure. movie? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, because yeah, yeah. I mean, trans sure. just simply the transitions, but also yeah. emotional peaks and valleys. Mm. I mean, uh, maybe you might want to hold off on the t t tears in this early part of the movie now and make it more dramatic in the end and build yeah. and you know, mm. you it, there's rhythms that you have to uh, because when you I, I know that like on um, beaches, um, you know, there were a lot of emotional scenes, yeah. so yeah. you can't have every scene be a tearjerker. We tried not to, anyway. Well, but you build. Yeah, yeah but that, that, there, that <coughs> is an example of... Gary was in the editing room. He always liked to come in the editing room at the end of the day, which was whatever. But the, the re, mostly, because Colleen was editing, I was editing, and Artie Schmidt, because they had him under contract, he actually cut one scene. He cut one scene. One scene in the movie. Yeah. He just stretched it out. It was mm. really funny. Because he but didn't want to interfere with us. No, he was yeah. such... He, he's, Artie used to be Richard's he was, he assistant. He assisted me. He uh, Back to the Future. Maybe. Oh, oh yeah. Artie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Artie's, Artie's a fantastic. Brilliant. And Roger Rabbit. And he brilliant. won two Oscars. He was my assistant on a movie called I Heard the Owl Call My Name. Uh, 
already, right at the beginning. And right at the beginning of my career, right before I got Harry and Tano, I had like an overlap, and thank God I had already. But what was, what was I going to say? Um, oh, Gary. Yeah. On, on beaches. Because there were these letters, yeah. and we rewrote those letters. Do you remember how oh, many times? We had, oh, this was, well, God. you're on film, so you had soundtrack. We had two entire shelves of track. But with the music the numbers, yeah. with the music numbers, they all were locked in with the exception of one, that one that uh, you felt that worked I, on. With Ben oh, Midler. Oh, God, it was like oh, oh, industry. forever um, cutting that, that music number. So yeah. were, were the music numbers uh, laid out at all in the script in terms of the oh, specifics yeah. of them? And then so yeah. they were kind of cutting from what had been... We shot the Hollywood Bowl right at the beginning of the shoot. Remember? That was like one in the first week. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, everything was laid out. And like, then uh, there was the famous one, Wind Beneath My Wings. Was that... Uh, that once... There was one cut made on that, and that was it. <laughs> yeah. There's, hard, there's not that many edits in that song. It was, it was really well done. Really yeah. well done. Mm. Uh, so when you guys are working with a director, uh, do you prefer to have a director kind of be at a distance for most of the time and then sort of go in at a certain point to give you notes? Yes. So you have that type of oh, freedom yeah. to execute what you yeah. can. Well, uh, I did see your interview with uh, uh, Tony Bill and how he worked with editors, and that's yeah. like a dream situation mm. for an editor. Is that not the norm usually? It's like, all different. That? It's all yeah. different. Yeah. Richard worked with Tony on... On um, a, a great movie called Boulevard Nights. Tony produced it. Very, uh, very emotional, good film. Basically, I was totally left alone. Mm. Totally. Michael Pressman, the director, came in the editing room a couple of times, not many times, and that was also a very music-driven film, very emotional film. I love that film. We love working with John Patrick Shanley. Oh, that's uh, Joe versus the Volcano. Yeah, yeah. Man, that I couldn't believe that script when I got that script. I said, "They're gonna let him make this script? This script is like so wacky." <laughs> Yeah. But he had just come off, you know, he had won the Academy oh, Award. for Moonstruck. Exactly. So he, kind of, uh... he was such a cool guy to work with. And we did not have a good preview on that picture. Hmm. Why didn't the uh, the preview go that well? We think? had to have, had like a... Um... It would, the previews mm -hmm. went well in New York. Oh, fantastic in New York. Yeah, but when we came out here to Pasadena, we had... Like a murder, she wrote wrap up ending that we you explained the whole plot. Yeah, and it was it was bad. I remember going to the screening at Warner Brothers with all the executives. Shanley didn't go. Just me. I, I I went to the screening with all the executives. I sat right next to the head of the studio. Lights come up after the movie's over. I leaned over to the. Terry Semmel, I think his name was. Big Wheel. I said, oh, by the way, John's in the editing room right now writing a new ending to the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and then he turned to me and he said, good. <laughs> I love that movie, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Doesn't have some great Movies stuff in it. Yeah. The last act is a little bit wacky, but... Oh, I, I think the beginning oh, by the way, when they're in the factory. Oh, that, that oh yeah. This environment he works in. That was brilliant. So on Edward Scissorhands, uh, you were both on set and you were editing uh, sort of the dailies into the scenes because I guess there was a, a rush to get the film released. Uh, so well, what was the, that? The, the, it's a little different than that. We were in yeah. Florida and uh, Tim, uh, you know, we were cutting on film. Yeah. We were at this you know, resort, tennis resort, the uh, Hoffman uh, Tennis Resort, uh, and so it was a great The resort location. is called Saddlebrook. Yeah, mm -hmm. Saddlebrook. And Golf and tennis resort, mm -hmm. and I'm a tennis player. Mm -hmm. So we anyway, were we, we, were were <laughs> we were in heaven. So we were editing on film, but this was still the tradition of every night you go and see dailies, and you'd sit with Tim, and I'd take notes, and you know, go back. That's... And, the element that is missing in today's filmmaking world. Hmm. Not sitting with a director at the end of the day's shoot 
and r running the dailies and yeah. taking notes because it's so important. Basically, after we came out of dailies, can I finish? Yeah, the, the, let me just talk about the note taking process. Right. When we finished dailies, we had a concept of how we were going to edit yeah. the movie. And also, Tim would say a couple of things, you know. Well, now everybody has, like, nobody you know, does an iPad, that. or they watch it on their computers alone, so there isn't that communal There's no, of, you're not sitting with each other. And a lot of times, these directors don't even, they're so tired at night, they don't want to even look they're at it. They're exhausted. Yeah. And they don't look at their dailies. No, and so don't. then, you know, you wrap set on a location, and you realize, wow, yeah. it would have been nice to have that, or this, mm -hmm. or, and it's too late to go back. But working with um, Tim, we uh, how many days over did we go on the shoot? I think it was twenty three days. Twenty three mm. days. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah. And but no one messed with them. They let them do that. So they we were already behind schedule because he went over in production. So we get back to town and we're at Warner Hollywood and we're, Tim's office is upstairs, and we're editing. We put together our first uh, cut and show it to him, and he really liked it. And, and I think it was only only a couple of weeks after we finished. Very, I would I would say ten days. Yeah, maybe after. And we had a screening uh, in the in the theater at uh, the Warner mm -hmm. Hollywood, the one at Formosa in Santa Monica. Mm -hmm. okay. That yeah. studio. And we were in the Marilyn Monroe suite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And anyway, so we showed it to him, and he liked it. And he came back to the editing room, and he says, "Wow, you guys did such a great job. Uh, I give me some time to think about it." And he, came, I think he worked with us for maybe two days. Yeah. Came into the editing room. Was any music laid laid down? Uh, in no. no, no, no. Well, we did I attempt, did. We did attempt. Danny that. Elfman. By let me finish that yeah. one thought. Yeah. About Colleen worked with Tim. I never worked with Tim. Mm. Uh, she recut the makeup scene. That was one scene that we recut. Oh, and the one. The and one. then the other scene we recut was the fight scene at the end. Yeah, that. And the other thing was, when we were watching dailies, Tim shot all the scenes with Vincent Price. You know, in one. Yeah. And they were it was written, just one scene. They were written. Was that built out here, or was that on location? Location. Uh, yeah, the big castle, the interior. The castle, uh, you explain. Well, yeah, the the um, the thing that was built back at Fox was the attic and the yeah. interior when she walked in. Mm. The exterior mm. was on location. But the big editing decision on that film was... Uh, it was it, it, Tim loved Vincent Price. He idolized him. And it, it, those scenes were written consecutively. We follow one right after the other. Mm. Yeah. When we looked at the dailies, Tim said to me, Richard, those scenes with Vincent Price, they're too good. I think we should split them up. Mm. I said, I totally agree, and I know exactly where to position them. And there was a couple, you know, working out the transitions. But, uh, and it made you feel like Vincent was in the movie much more. Yeah. And it was more of the character's memory of Vincent Price, and you're seeing it progress right. throughout the film. Right, right. It so worked that was... really well. But Tim is, was such an easy guy to work with. So we honestly spent maybe 48 hours with him in, 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 in the editing. Room. editing. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. At the most. At the most. So just a lot of freedom. He just delegates to Well, he liked and everything. His, uh, I yeah. mean, but no, he, he had made things so clear. In our, and we were so in sync with what he wanted, uh, and he was such a gentleman. Uh, he was so easy to work with. He'd say, Might I "Great suggest? job, fantastic job. I'm just so pleased." Mm. Wow. But might I suggest this? And that mm. was like the makeup scene. It was too long, yeah. and we needed to cut it down. And it was. It was. It was, it was it, so we it cut was, out like maybe a forty. You did. It. I didn't. Yeah. yeah I, 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 I. I think I was on the movie. I didn't want to have anything to do with that scene. I didn't. <laughs> Joe Roth was the head of the studio. He came to us and said, it was going to be like a March release. He says, can we make it for Christmas? Mm. That's, That's where you got the idea. Uh, so they went over in production, and we got even that much less time in post. Mm. Wow. But uh, it all worked out really no, well. No, that picture cut together very quickly. We had no problem meeting. Very, them. I mean, unbelievably quickly. It was, it was over with before we... But, you know, the preparation for the mix and... Yeah. And all that. As a matter of fact, she 
you, Colleen left the picture early because I was starting another film shooting. We uh, Article Ninety Nine. Article Ninety Nine with Howie Deutsch yeah. and and uh, and, and another. It was like a suit. medical. Yeah, drama. yeah. It yeah. was uh, yeah. Ray Liotta, Donald. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Kiefer Sutherland. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So she left. And go covered on for like, like it was a long time, like four I, weeks. I, at least four weeks. At, at least it was at least four weeks. So and I then, didn't finish. Then the when I finished the mix on, you know, we did Scissor that a lot in our career, where because we were at that time uh, much wanted, and so we would be getting film offers before we finished another. So mm -hmm. I would start, and he would finish, and okay. uh, but also something I want to bring in. I had to make some career choices because I had the children. I had two girls. Mm. And so, like at that time, uh, I just finished uh, uh, Edward Scissorhands and Kathy Baker and I became friends because we all had kids and we'd meet at the swimming pool and it was like family. Mm. And then she got Article 99 and we got Article 99. So we joined forces and found a preschool for our children, mm -hmm. and you know it was it's, it was a camaraderie. We went, we had Thanksgiving yeah. together, and uh, yeah. but uh, having said that, I had to make choices when Morgan was born. Finally, uh, I'm now ca ca you know being, having to take two kids on location, and not that I'm complaining because right. it was a fun experience for all of us to be as a family in a new place. Yeah. But when they start, when Caitlin started school, we were fortunate enough. Our three locations, uh, when she started kindergarten, was uh, how did it come? Uh, so I married an axe murderer, sister act. Oh no, so I married axe murderer. Um, getting even with dad, then sister act. We're all in San Francisco in the summer, mm -hmm. yeah. so we had the it same nanny. Mm -hmm. The same, you know, she went to a Jewish uh, preschool, mm -hmm. you know, it, was, it worked out great. But after that, doing location work was really hard because they didn't want to go. I didn't want, you know, getting them into a private school and then trying to pull them out and getting permission. It's just, mm -hmm. it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So um, my last location job taking the girls was Mighty Ducks 3 or th 3... D, oh, D3. Uh, D3, I whatever. <laughs> I forget. Um, and we were in Minnesota, and um, it was tough, you know, uh, because I was promised a condo. They didn't give me a condo. I had just one hotel room trying to, and we're all sleeping in the same bed. It was not uh, easy. And that's when I made a choice. I got approached to do animation. Mm. And it worked perfectly for my life. Yeah. Uh, I worked at Disney for six years. I did animation. I had a silver pass so we could go to Disneyland for free. <laughs> Fantastic. It was like, you know, it's like, it couldn't, hey, this fell from the sky. And then he was doing, you, you know, you did a lot of films without me. Yeah. And then I did six years at the Hallmark Network where I did, you know, yeah. those family kind of movies. And then now we're back together. Do you feel uh, like those, like, there are special challenges then that, like, women face. I mean, because I hear all you the time. It's hard. And I, I really want to say something yeah. because what surprises me the most is how unsupportive other women are mm. to you. There's I've heard this, that before as well. Yeah. They, they, there's this uh, group that's that, yeah, say, well, you can't have kids and a career or because you're not dedicating enough of your soul or your heart to mm. your job, which isn't true. Mm. Because once when I'm at my job, I'm focused in on that. That's my full creative attention. I know my I didn't have to worry about my children. I always had the money to have, you know, private school, nannies, yeah. dance, tennis, <laughs> you know what I mean? Keeping them happily busy. Uh, you just have to be really good at, uh, scheduling and balancing, yeah. right. and there isn't. You sh there shouldn't shouldn't be like you can or can't, and be judged yeah. on that. Absolutely, you know, yeah. like well, she's not as serious about her work because she's got kids. I heard that a lot. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. it wasn't. You know, you really can't be dedicated if you're, you know, raising mm -hmm. children. Yeah, I think one thing. I like to control the situation. Mm -hmm. I like to be the ch in charge. Mm -hmm. I don't like. I don't like uh, a lot of input from outside sources. I mean, I mean, we're respectful. We take notes. We go to, 
leave us alone, let us do our thing. And one way I've been able to maintain that is by creating my own environment. Mm. The problem that I see with a lot of editors is they're not in their own environment. They don't, they work for these producers, they put them in an a, a 8 by 10 foot room with no windows and they go say, go create. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. And to those people, I say, fuck you. I'm not going to work in that environment. That's not how I work. Hmm. Yeah. You can see how I work. Look at, I mean, before, when we were editing on film, the whole downstairs was 1,200 square feet. Beautiful garden. Four we gardens, four cams, yeah. Yeah. I mean, beautiful you can backyard. See it well enough. How the fuck can you create? <laughs> no, you should see where they put editors these days. And these TV producers... Uh, you know, this, you know, you know, these TV producers and the, and so many executives now and so many people, yeah. the, they turn these editors into fucking robots, machines. It's horrible the way they treat mm. some of the television editors, I think. Do you mm. think that uh, in a certain degree editing isn't as... Uh, you know, some people don't respect editing as much as they should. Oh, I think they respect it a great deal. Yeah. That's yeah, why so no, much no. focus is put yeah, on it. There's that. a problem, Colleen. There is a problem. The problem is, since the age of digital editing, editing when we were editing on film, people just couldn't even comprehend it. They mm. couldn't even... Yeah. You know, they couldn't even have access deal with to it. it. You had they one didn't, copy. They, you know, they didn't. You know, <laughs> and the negative. I remember a couple of times. Yeah. But you I know what I'm saying? There was one copy. Yeah. Yeah. No, but it's not like someone could take a copy on and put it on a put it little on a drive and, or, yeah. and take it up and re-edit it. I themselves. remember a couple of times when I like wanted to zing it to a director or give it to him. You know. Mm. Yeah. I say, oh, do me a favor, would you? I'm going to go to the loop. Make this spice for me while I'm gone, would you? <laughs> You know the old, but the, but nowadays, everyone has a computer. Mm. They mm. all know how to. There's all these uh, editing programs, all these digital. You know, everybody's an editor now. In in some ways, in some ways, you know. Yeah. But it's uh, really a craft that you have to nurture oh, over yeah. time, and you become better. And yeah, you what, so much. like anything else, and. Uh, Steve Rifkin is doing a great thing for editors right now. Do you know who he is, Steve Rifkin, the editor? Uh, I think he did Born Ultimatum. Is that? Steve um, no, he he did. Uh, he worked with Cameron. Oh, Cameron uh, James Cameron. Yeah, yeah. Didn't he work with Cameron? Yes. He should have won the Oscar. Remember? He got screwed. Yeah. But he is now a big deal in the ACE, and he's the one that's. And Alan Heim, they're promoting this thing where editors get recognition for it at all these different film festivals. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. So there's so the American Cine, uh, Cinema Editors is a very good organization for the you know. Uh, I'm I mean, I remember in the seventies was it seventies George Lucas built across from Universal Studios. A place called the Egg Company, and you should have seen the editing rooms. He was really respectful of the editors, mm. yeah. you know. But it's like it's something. It, it's 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 one of the reasons I created my own editing space because you, you one picture after the other, and now you have to go. And then you have to get into a discussion with a producer yeah. about the equipment and this and this is what it's going to cost and you know so I just created my own editing space yeah. and my own environment. Your own company and you can run the rule, you know, make the rules. And he's had it. Yeah. He's edited from home most of his yeah. career, which now, is very unusual in the beginning. And that's you and know people had to come here to work. Yeah. And it doesn't always work with the major studios, but we did major studio we, we, pictures here. Like with Sister we did, Act. We, we did Sister Act here. Mm. And the uh, the director, Emil Ardolino, he loved working here. Mm. They like some people, they want to be on the lot. They yeah. want to be on the 
on the lot. But I would say the people that we've wor we worked with, I would say ninety percent they loved. It. It. Yeah, but we're, we're they didn't like. We don't do major bumping into executives or yeah, whoever yeah. on the lot asking questions. It was separated. It's like a safe place. Really yeah, to very work. safe yeah. place. So I think the editing environment, if I you know, is a real issue. Mm. I mean, they put editors in these rooms. No windows. Mm, mm. Oh, fuck. I, 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 now, when I was doing major studio pictures, we generally always had good space, right? Yeah, um, was, yeah. <clears throat> and we had the ink and paint for uh, yeah. down and out yeah. and beaches. Yeah. And then Sister Act we did here. We're, I'm talking about Disney films mm. that we did. Yeah. But, um, but it's a big deal to set up an editing room. That's why... Nowadays, I mean, I have a new computer in this room here that I haven't even we haven't even taken out of the box because we've been too busy. It's it's we've been too busy, and also making a changeover sometimes to a new computer is a, a little bit. But we have a full on Avid downstairs here mm. in the room upstairs where we Alfonso another, works. Another full on Avid, mm. yeah, another editing, and then in Morgan's. She has a little office next to her bedroom. She's got a full-on Avid, but it's 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 a it's a mini Avid. It's a small screen, a laptop, and a hard drive. Yeah. But we've we're turning out five six pictures a year now. Mm. Wow. Whereas on film it used to be one and a half. Mm. But that's what that's what the marketplace demands now. Yeah. Because we're in the indie you know? world now. Because we're in the indie yeah. world. They have no money. They have they <laughs> you you got to. Crank it out. <laughs> right? What, what's yeah. it like um, working as like a family? You know, because you guys are husband and wife and now your <laughs> oh, daughter yeah. works for oh, you. No, it's well. lasted 30 <laughs> years. I think that's just pretty much... Yeah, uh, no, no. We're... we're, we're um, I mean, there's just... Yeah, I mean, things. occasionally, you know, I go <laughs> off and do a movie or, you know, or, you know. But it's... Um, the no. thing is... We actually, we like it. Yeah. People yeah. ask me, what, how, how, what keeps you going? You know, why, 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 why? Well, because we actually like it. Yeah. I like editing. I, I love it. It's a, mm -hmm. and we, we like the people we meet. We like to, you know, we like to help them. You know, there's times it gets uh, frustrating or people, you know, especially in the indie f field because... They run out of money, mm -hmm. and, you know, the, you know it's, it's that that kind of stuff. And the pressure but you have, getting, but the yeah. pressure at a major studio, I mean, they the way they run things now, it's micromanaged it's like, a lot. Oh, <laughs> and they set it up oh. that the first editors, it's I already mean, set up that he's going to be fired after twelve weeks mm -hmm. because they're going to yeah, and then they guy. bring in a finisher. You know, it's like, give me a fucking. Break. Yeah. Mm. It's like how they treat writers too. You know, they have one writer and then they fire the writer and they bring on a dozen others. <laughs> and they, you know. I, yeah, yeah. So it, it comes. So that's one. That's what I like about the, the independent field. But what do you think has been the proudest moments of your careers? Uh, you know, each of you, or the project that you feel that you're the proudest of. I would say, uh, for me, it would be Edward Scissorhands. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then maybe Beaches after that. Of course, yeah. I didn't get editing credit, although I did edit. Oh, yeah, well, you should have, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, it's uh, Edward Scissorhands is right up there. Um, I mean, I, I have, you know... Uh, well, Rocky, or, or oh, maybe yeah. the Missouri School Films. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, Edward Scissorhands, Rocky, Harry and Tano. I love Moscow and the Hudson. Yeah. Robin Williams just died, and mm. I love that picture. It had it's had so much. Mazursky told me at Lincoln Center about four years ago they had a screening of the film. At the time we did the film, that's another composer I got him to do the score of a friend of mine, David uh, McHugh. David McHugh, who is now teaching. He had done a couple of pictures for me, but he wrote the music. And then he had this song that he had written years ago, and it was called Freedom. Freedom, freedom. It was, and we put it at the end of the movie. 
with all these Russian photographs. Or it was fucking great. It was fucking great. And the Zersky said, it's not Richard. I, it's a little over the top. I said, Paul, no, no, it's good. Stay with it, man. Stay with it. Stay mm -hmm. with it. He almost was going to cut it out. I got him to stay with it. Because at the end of the movie, he has a conversation with his truck driver. I think about it, I get emotional. He's talking about how great America is. You know, and so now, 15 years later, they run this thing at Lincoln Center, you know, after the 9 11 mm -hmm. thing and all that. Mm -hmm. And this patriot, oh my, he, he, Mazursky said, Richard, you wouldn't have believed it. Mm -hmm. The audience just went. I mean, it was just unbelievable reaction, you know? So, that's the thing about the Mazursky pictures. If you look at Harry Antano, it feels, could have been made yesterday. Mm. Yeah. It's not dated. 